All right, let's go ahead and get right into it. So on this song, your left hand one is going to be on A, right below middle C. Here's middle C, C, B, A. And your right hand three is going to be on E. And so for this one, uh, we do have a few grace notes to talk about. We have seen a couple grace notes uh, earlier in Five Figure Jazz. Um, and so it looks like the note is almost in a smaller font. Um, and it's important to know that these grace notes are ornaments. They're decorations to support the bigger, more important note. And in this case, the big note is the E with the three finger. And so our grace note is going to be this D sharp, this black key right here, which I'm going to play with a two. Now, grace notes go too fast to count. And so it's really more of just a kind of a slide into that important note. There's a couple ways you can do it. I prefer the two or th go into the three very quickly like that. Uh, another way to do it is to play both of them at the same time and then lift up on the grace note. So let me try that. So it's two and three at the same time. And then I'm going to lift up on the two. Now, when I do that quickly, it sounds almost identical to the first way that I played, which is quickly going two, three. So totally up to you on that, whatever feels more comfortable for your hand. Now, rhythm is super important on this. And the second measure kind of trips up students a little bit. And so this one, let's count that together. We're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that second measure is what is difficult because there is that beat four being held over from the second measure to the third measure uh, comes as kind of a surprise to students. They don't expect it to happen that soon. And so what I want to do is I want to uh, clap that rhythm in the second measure and sing it out loud. One, two, three, four. And then we're holding. Let's try that again a little bit slower. Ready in second measure. One, two, three, four, hold. And so when we do that, let's just isolate that second measure here. We're going to do the exact same thing at a slower tempo. We're still going to count out loud. One, two, three, four. And that is such a cool rhythm in this tune. It really is one of the ones that, that makes it. Um, and notice the articulation mark in there. Beat one is very short. It's a staccato. And then everything else is very long. And so here it is, measures one and two together. One, two, three, four, short. One, three, four, two, three. And then here is a very long phrase, kind of a connected phrase between the hands. And then measure five, it goes back. We've seen this before. Exact same rhythm, exact same notes, exact same everything. It's really just this beat four that's changing. Short. One, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then this is just measure four, but just backwards. And then right here in measure 13, it's all notes that we've seen before, except for this E flat here, which is going to be played with that third finger on the black key. Right here in 13. Three, check this out right in measure 14 uh, this is going to be the exact same rhythm that we've seen all the way through but double check those left hand notes sometimes that can throw students off it's going to be a D and an F played with a five and three and then instead of going down usually it's one three two four five three this it's going to be five three going to two and four going up so let me play that for you. That's going to be measure 13, measure 14, hands together. One, two, three, four. And so this style of music is hip hop. It's meant to be, you know, kind of sound like a rap song um, on the radio. And there's lots of repetition uh, in those songs, which is not a bad thing. All good things have to have repetition. And so this is just a very feel good song. What is the most important thing about this style of music is good, steady time. And so we're wanting it to just be like a metronome. You are a machine. The time is not going anywhere. And so with that, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm counting the entire time through here. If you don't 
count all the way throughout there, then time gets a little iffy. It can slow down or it can speed up. And that's really what we're trying to avoid with this style of music, the beat and the groove and the rhythm, so important. So just make sure that you're really counting, uh, being focused in on a super steady beat. I would highly recommend playing this with a metronome uh, or the play along track. Let's go on now to measure 15. Uh, this is going into the bridge. So we have this ascending right hand line. And notice what I'm doing there. It's a low note going to a high note, and I'm naturally going to crescendo into that. It makes it easy, or it makes it uh, more interesting to listen to. Let's check out that rhythm. That's another tricky rhythm. This will be measure 18, so it'll be like one, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Try that one more time. 18. Let's slow that down a little bit. Let's count and clap together. 18. One. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. And so when we play that, let's go pickups into 17. One, two, three, four. One, two, short. And so it's a similar rhythm to uh, the one that we had counted on the first page in measure two and measure six. Um, but it's kind of flip flopped a little bit at the long note and then short, long. So that staccato is right in the middle of there. Uh, notice what I'm doing with that left hand right there in that 18. This is with a 1 and 3 on an F and A. And then my next two notes are G and B. And so I'm going to take this thumb and I'm going to go up a step, play with a 1 and a 2. So very easy. Everything is right there uh, next to our five finger position. This is 17. 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. This here in 21, it's the exact same two notes, G and B, but there is a B flat in the left hand of measure 21. And we've seen this before. If there's a flat with our thumb, it's not a big deal at all. We're going to move in to the piano with our hand to make up for that distance. So I was back here and I'm going to push it in just a little bit. Still use the exact same fingers, five and two right there. I'm sorry, one and two. And your right hand's just going to play nice half notes. position here and we've seen this 24 going into 25 this is all the same the exact same rhythm that we saw in 18 C, D, C. now 29 look at this it's the exact same one and a two G and B flat that we've seen in measure 21 and we're gonna approach it the same way we're just gonna move into the piano a little bit more right hand 3 is gonna be on E flat right here so it's a very similar sort of phrase, but a little bit different. And then we have this short. And so listen to that. This will be 29 going into 30. One, two, three, four, short. And then I actually have a full measure of silence here. I don't want any sound. And silence in music can just can be just as cool as sound. And this is one of those instances where we just have a great beat going. Everything is grooving along. Three, four, one, two, three, four, off, two, three, four. And then we go back in and then we kind of repeat. But I call that a break. Um, and it's just where nothing is happening there. It's a very cool thing. We've had sound all throughout the tune, and it's just kind of nice just to, it's an unexpected uh, little surprise there, but I think it's really cool, and especially, especially there, I want you to count, 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 uh, because it only really works, and it only sounds super cool if our time is right on the money. So 29 sounds like this, and we can count together together during that one measure break. One, two, three, four, off, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So time never stops. Even during that measure where there's just silence, time still moves forward. We still need to count, count, count. After that, it would just repeat basically back to the beginning, repeating the first 12 measures of the song before going to the coda which will be, uh, in my music, it's measure 33. 
and it's stuff that we've seen before. In fact, it looks very similar to measure 13. But this is a little bit new. And that's with this one and a two, which we've seen before. We were just seeing it with that flat right there uh, in measure 21. And it even appears with the B natural in measure 18. So let's play that again. This will be the coda. It goes back. And so uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is that very last note. Um, it has a weird looking symbol above it that kind of looks like a carrot, an upside down carrot. Um, and so what this is called in classical music, it's called a marcato. And in jazz, I'm used to calling it a housetop. Uh, but it's exactly the same thing, marcato or housetop, whatever you prefer. Um, and how we play it is it's a short note, but it has a little bit of weight on it. I tell students we should play it short and fat with a PH. And so it is short, not as clipped uh, or as short as a staccato like this. Right, that's too short. I want a little bit more length on it. I want some weight on that note. And you can also kind of accent that a little bit. It's kind of like a longer staccato with an accent as well. And so you can play that one louder. I'll play 37, you can hear that. So there's a little bit of length on there. It is a short note, but it's just a little bit longer, and I play that out a little bit more. I play it stronger. That is a marcato marking or a housetop, um, whatever you prefer. And that will probably wrap it up for Nothing But Sunshine. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll catch you next time.